everyone doing today? It's Tuesday at like four in the afternoon. How's everyone doing today? Magnificent day out. It's it's snowing. Just dropped the little guy off at daycare. I got the house to myself. Life is good. Life is good. How's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing today? So today, new build. Trident's not done. The trident's not done. It's right there. That's I think that's where it's gonna live. Um, the FL Sun is the super racer is kind of living on the ground right now, but I, I think the trident will fit there. Um, so we got we'll finish it up Saturday. We'll finish it up Saturday. But uh, I was gonna finish it up today, but instead we're gonna start with a new build. As the great poet DJ Khaled said, another one. That's right. We're building a V zero. Um, this one's a little bit different. So for those that have been following the channel for a while, this is now the third, third V zero, uh, we're building. Um, we have the V 0.0, which I modded with the, uh, the belted Z and I might put another mod or two on that. Uh, we have the, the V zero one, that's the LDO kit. And now we have Another V01 that's based on an LDO kit, but it's got some extra. So this is from Lecter. Um, there still should be a link in the description to go to it. Uh, they sent me this kit to build, uh, to show off. It's think of it like a V01 Pro or premium kit. So it's, it's got a bunch of extra bells and whistles in it. Um, but let's see here. So it, it's got LDO motors and I believe frame and whatnot. Uh, Neobond panels. Uh, black hardware set, so like all the, the screws and whatnot. Uh, the X-Rail is now MGN9. That's a mod some people have been doing, so it's now an MGN9 X-Rail. You have a Graviflex magnetic foil bed, I believe that's what it is, which is Graviflex is like the really good magnets. Um, we got Hulaflon, uh wire harness, umbilical PCB mod, the LED strips. So if you look at it, uh, let me pull up a, a, a video here. So if you're curious, like LEDs, I, I don't need LEDs in my Voron. Why, why do I need LEDs in my Voron, right? Like, you know, y you might not want them, but, uh, but you do want them. So yeah, so it comes with the, uh, the LEDs because we all know for those that, you know, partake in the occasional viewing of a, uh, of a Linus Tech Tip videos, LEDs make it go faster. So we got some LEDs. What else do we have? Um, Bond Tech hardware for the tool head, original Bond Tech. Uh, printed parts, it does come with printed parts. This has printed parts in the box. Um, I did not print my own parts. They are ABS glass filled, which Lecter makes in house. They actually have a filament production line now. Um, Pre flash clipper on the Raspberry Pi. A Kirigami bed mod. Uh, we'll get to that because we'll unbox it. And then uh, a V01 LED. So it's, yes, it's pricey, but it comes with all the bells and whistles. It comes with a, a few mods that some people in the community always do. So it's 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 a more premium kit. Um, now, is it justifiable a thousand euro for such a small printer? That's personal choice, right? You don't need to buy a Lamborghini to drive to work, but it's nice to have a Lamborghini. So yeah. So I figure since Lecter is a European company, I do believe they do ship worldwide though. Um, I should stream earlier in the date so that the Euro bros can actually see it. Uh, next Tuesday stream, the plan is we'll start this stream today, see how far we get on the build. So we'll unbox and we'll start with the build. Continue next Tuesday, because next Saturday we'll be tried it, wrapping that up. Next Tuesday stream, I'm hoping earlier, uh, 10 a.m. till whenever, Eastern time zone. So right now it is 4 p.m. Eastern. I don't know UTC. So so anyways, there is that. So hopefully for a while, we'll be doing two streams a week, I'm hoping. Um, and then Thursday, most likely this Thursday or next Thursday, I'm hoping this Thursday, uh, Patreon supporters and YouTube member live stream, uh, probably around the same time, four o'clock. No Kirigami bed mod in my kit. We received them after the shipment. No! Okay, so if you buy this kit, it comes with the Kirigami bed mod. 
Mine doesn't have it. I've actually had this sitting under my desk for like a month now. So, I guess I do have to build the bed. Dang it. So, for those that don't know what the Kirigami bed mod is, uh, uh, let me find it here. This is the Kirigami bed mod. So it's basically, instead of having to build your bed carriage, it's like a, a folded sheet steel assembly for it. So the kit comes with that. Mine does not have that. So let's open it up. So to be fair, I did open it. Um, and that was just to make sure nothing got damaged during shipping or anything, because it was raining when they dropped this off. Um, so I did open it, but I haven't actually like looked at anything. So, go to the overhead cam with the washed out colors, and let's start going through this. What do we got? We got some panels, it looks like. Oh, some more. Nope, it's as zoomed out as I can go. Okay. Bubble wrap. Does Fermio ship to the USA? I believe so. No work today? Uh, no work for a bit, actually. Um, we'll get to that later. So, um, I guess we'll just start going through these boxes. So move this over here. Um, make some room. So, I guess we'll just go through, I'll unbox it, then I'll put it on the shelf, and then we'll start building it. So we got these panels here. I think these are the panels. Try not to scratch anything. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and by the way, um, somebody's going to get this printer. I'm not keeping this printer. Um, for those that are in the 3D printing community, um, E3D is setting up um, a foundation, I believe, in honor of Sanjay. Um, who was one of the founders of E3D, passed away um, in December. So they will be setting up a foundation. Um, a few people have already done like uh, fundraisers for it, but I'm holding off until they actually get the foundation set up and as part of me doing a fundraiser stream, um, I will give away this fully built printer. I will put it in a box and ship it to somebody. Fully built. Um, you're your own warranty. If something gets damaged during shipping, we'll, we'll try and figure something out. But once it's yours, it's yours. So I'm, I'm not selling you a printer. There's no support with it. But I will build this printer. We will build it on stream. We will get it all up and running. Get it all tuned. Get it all good. And then somebody's going to get it. I'm going to give it away. So we'll do that. Uh, hoops, whoops, thou and me. Thy is you. Thank you for becoming a member. So yeah, so I'm not gonna keep this printer. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here and I'm kind of jelly already. Cause I'm, I'm looking through the, uh, the wrap here and I'm already jelly. So there's our bottom plate, I believe. And some other panels. I'm not gonna unwrap the panels, so we got that. Amats, thank you for coming to remember. Is that worldwide? Um, Canada, US, EU, I believe. Um, details to follow. I am not looking forward to figuring out how much it is going to be to ship. If this was a V2, we would not be doing it. Oops, wrong button. If this was a V2, shipping a fully built V2, uh, no. A V0, you could kind of, it, it's a little bit, I think, better for shipping. Ooh. So I got black panels. And then what are these? Oh, these are the clear panels. So yeah, they're they're blue cuz they got the protective film on it. So yeah, so these are the clear panels and whatnot. 
Uh, can you print all the parts for a Born Out of V-Zero? You can print all the functional parts. So you won't be able to print the skirts, okay? Um, like, this is not gonna fit on here, okay? But you can print all the parts that are needed to get a functional printer. So what you would do is you would print all the parts for your V2 or whatever on the V0, get it functional, and then once it's up, then you can print your skirts and whatnot, your enclosure stuff. Okay. And that was one of the uh, design considerations. Uh, power supply, LRS-150, it is a mean well. So that's good. Which a lot of this, if you built an LDO kit, will look familiar. Uh, tool head. So box label tool head. So we got ourselves a Bontech CHT nozzle, a 0.4 millimeter Bontech CHT nozzle. KB3D, hello. We got uh, fans. Everything's all wrapped up. Yep, we got our fans there. What kind of fans are they? I don't know. Uh, okay, Sunon and GD Stein. Uh, PTFE, Bontech gears. Ooh, actual good JST hardware. That's not like the crappy China JST hardware. Uh, tool head board. More Bontech stuff. Raindew bearings. All the connectors. So it looks like we are going to be doing some crimping, I believe, though. Uh, we do have a Fetus High Flow Dragon, I believe. Yep, so we do have a Fetus High Flow Dragon. Need all that flow. Uh, what do we got? A sock. Set screws for some other stuff. More Bontech stuff, the drive gear. So it's all legit Bontech. Uh, blacked out pulleys for that uh, pimp factor. Uh, belts, thermistor, and a heater. And that's a 60 watt heater. That's hot. Okay, so we got all that. Back in the box. Gonna try and keep stuff as organized as possible. No, nope, this kit came with the dragon. So, small kit comes with dragon. Big kit, no dragon. Editor's note, they did send a dragon. I do have one. Linear rails. So, uh, for this kit it does come with the mgn 9 x-rail so we got a blacked out mgn 9 x-rail here and then the rest are uh 2z oh so i have an extra one so i got an extra mgn 9 maybe i'll use it for something um I, I don't know if production kits will come with an extra one probably not and for the brand it's it's shl um i got a pre-production kit so some stuff like branding might be a little bit different on the production one. So, so LDO rails, except for the, the MJN9. Hardware. Linus R, member for eight months. Congrats. Thank you for hanging out for eight months. Christopher Muller, $10. Thank you, appreciate it. Pay me after stream on Discord and I will send you a spare Kimigami bed from the European group by, ooh. Um, I'll, I want to say pass simply because I'll be past the point of putting the bed on. Um, if you want to send me one, I'll, I'll put it in after, but I, I'm hoping to knock this build out pretty quick. Um, like we already have a bed on it, but just DM me on the discord. We'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, VHB tape. I've got a ton of VHB tape now. Uh, if you've seen the LDO kit, this is all LDO stuff. So we got the uh, the brass heat set tool, which I needed another one. 
We got the Feetzes. We got those uh, stainless steel backers for mounting your rail so you don't need to use that printed part. Something in here. Which is this? What's this? What's this? Magnets. Ooh, these are powerful magnets. Okay. Back in there. Smart to put the magnets in something. A whole bunch of hardware and drag chains. Gee, funny money. 14 months. Jesus. It's been that long. I I still like, we're coming up on, was it April? Early April, I think is two years since I started streaming regularly. Um, man, time flies. We're up over 100 streams. We are up over 100 right now. Okay. I'm, I'm saving um, the printed parts and the frame for last. So I got a big old box labeled electronics. Ooh, stickers. For on design, LDO. I'll add them to my pile of stickers that I... The thing is, I have all these stickers, and I don't know where to put them. I, I was going to put them on the wall here, but now I've got the switch wire with the ERKFA kind of blocking everything. So, I I might take the prints down from there and put, like, a board up, and then, I don't know. We'll figure something out. I got all these stickers I need to put somewhere. Uh, tool head wiring, because it's got a tool head board. So, like, a breakout board. So, we got that. Uh, pre-made wire harness. So that is good. I like me pre-made wire harnesses. Uh, those are Igus chains. Awesome. I Really? I've never seen the small Igus chains. Let me take a look. We have to go back. Oh, they are. Very nice. Which ones? Are they? The... The LDO kit comes with, uh, the brand is Pund, P-U-N-D, or is it P-U-N-D? Oh, Pund is Pund upside down. Uh, what percentage of money? Um, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, technically I get more from Patreon but Patreon is more of a pain in the butt to do community stuff with. Um, on YouTube, I can make like member streams, but that's only open to members. But the member streams, I have more control over like the back end of it versus an unlisted stream that people from Patreon could join. So um, I, I want to say YouTube, if you're going to pick one, you know, I make less, like I get a smaller cut. I still get 70%, which is much better than like Twitch, for example. But it's easier for me to interact with the community on YouTube versus Patreon. Because it, it just, I stream on YouTube. If I was on Twitch, it would be different, I think. Hi, Dunkle. Uh, we got the little wire channel thingy. A Raspberry Pi 3, which I could probably sell for half the value of this kit right now. A uh, little heat sink, so we're going to put that in the pie. Get in there. I don't know with Raspberry Pi boxes. I can never open Raspberry Pi boxes without destroying them. So, so Pi 3B. Oh, it comes with an SD card. Yep, Pi 3B plus. Put the heat sink in there so I don't lose it. There go. Uh, what's the feel of the kit so far? Awesome. Uh, power supply. I think it's that Thompson one. Uh, Garrus, thank you for coming to member. Yep, so we got the, the Day Green Thompson. They're all different brands, but they're all the same. Uh, is that the screen? Nope, this is the tool head board. So there's two parts of the tool head bar. There's a part that attached to the tool head, and then there's this part 
that kind of fills that back void. Um, Linus, thank you for coming to member. Stefan, thank you for coming to member. And JP Gray 87, thank you for upgrading your membership. So yeah, so this part right here um, goes right in here. So let me turn the panels back on. So see this panel right here? This gets replaced with this. And then you have one plug going to your tool head. And then underneath you have all these plugs that connect to your controller board. And this is by uh, Timmet on the Voron Discord. He designed it. So we got that. Back in there so we don't damage it. What else? Uh, wiring and LED strip stuff. Uh, PTFE. A plug. It's pre-wired, it looks like. The LDO V0. Uh, uh, the screen. So, I don't need this one. This is European. So this one, um, we can uh, proceed to uh, yeet it. But, North American plug. Whole whack load of zip ties. Thank you. It's always good to have a zip tie. Loves it, ties. And then for the controller, we have a SKR Mini E3 V2. Which does have... Oh. It does sort of squeak. <laughs> so SKR Mini E3 V2. back in there oh no the the instructions for the raspberry pi what will i do without those so pre-made wiring i love me pre-made wiring i i can wire up a printer pretty quick because i've done it a million times but yeah the us eu winner may need the plug ah good point where'd you go yeah there we go back in the box you go This motors. We have motors. So we've got our extruder motor, our XY motors, which are these beefier than the normal ones? I don't know. Chonky Nemo 14s. So there we go. And then our lead screw for Zed. Which, ooh, it's coated. And then it's got the nut there. So it is LDO, and we do have a, uh, I don't know what that coating is, but it's black. So there's our motors, the things that make the thing move. Uh, swap it out for the Pico? Uh, no, because I, I need the Pico for my V Minion. Um, Build plate. Teflon. Yeah, it's, it's Teflon, I think. All kits should come with candy. There should be candy. Up here. I was told there would be candy. Unless it's in here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So the build plate. So am I going to... I'm going to have to put the build plate together. That's fine. Not an issue. Do that after stream. I have a, if, For those that don't know how to put together these... Uh, these aluminum tooling plate beds when it comes to putting the magnet on and whatnot. Um, I have a video on my channel on how to do that. So, so there's the bed, the magnet, the heater. Oh, a pre-made bed, magnet, and heater. <laughs> I forgot LDO puts them together now. So there it is. It's all pre-done by LDO. Uh, 24 volt, 60 watt. What's this one? 24 volt, 60 watt. There we go. So there we go. There. Put that right in there. With an extra magnet. All the magnets. So is it gravif? 
Or no, I gotta put the magnet on. I gotta put the magnet on. So that's the Graviflex magnet there. Okay. Yes, there's candy. We'll get to the candy. We'll get to the candy. Gotta save the candy for last. Uh, T stands for... What does T stand for? Oh. There's the bed. Oh, textured bed. And the other one's probably untextured bed, I'm assuming. I'm trying to break down all these extra wrappers. As we go. Uh, what do we got in here? We got springs. So I'll take them out of here so I don't take some out. Yeah, so we got springs and nuts and a JST connector. Yeah, and then a regular flatbed. So we got a textured and an untextured bed, that's good. Sometimes I like printing with textured, sometimes I don't. It, it depends on what I'm printing. And then the candy. Oh, and an extra thermal fuse. So put all this back in here. Uh, does the LDO website where you can buy foreign? So LDO does not sell direct, okay? LDO only sells through resellers, okay? So you have to find out who the LDO reseller in your country is and buy for them. So this kit has a lot of LDO parts, but you can, it's not an LDO kit. It it's, uses LDO parts along with extras to make the kit. Certified, thank you for coming to member. Oh my God, how much candy did you send me? What are these? Kalev. What are these? They are very good. Okay. Oh, that's right. You guys are all from the same. Uh, yeah, Lecter. No, not let check. Estonia? I want to say Est Estonia. Let me check the website. Uh, Estonia. Yeah. Meth. Probably meth. Hopefully it's not meth. Mm. These aren't going to be good for my diet. The winner get will get whatever candy's not eaten. Um, you, you have to remember, I am married and I have a wife. I can't let her see these. Otherwise, the winner will get none. Mm. Oh, these are good. Those are good. I'm going to have to hide these. Had him with all the check candy. Okay, rails or correction extrusions. Uh, the this kit comes with everything you need to build the printer, except for tools. Um, extrusions are green. Another LDO sticker. So I don't need the big box anymore. Magnus, thank you for coming a member. So they are the, the shiny green extrusions. And I believe the parts are green too, like black and green. Oh man, I forgot how light these are. <laughs> And I got my little slab of granite out. I swear, unwrapping all these is the more, most annoying part. 
in the bin. Good thing it's garbage night. Prusa bear kit. I, part of me wants to build one. Not right now. I, I won't have time to, but... I'm trying to build more non-Voron printers. So, V-Minion. Actually, that's the only one I got planned right now. So, excursions. Don't scratch up my frame potential. You gotta win it first. Which, if you want a chance at winning, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And uh, I'm not saying it'll increase your odds, but I have heard that if you if you like the smash button, that does increase your chances. So that is something you may want to look into. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it may. Like you could win if you if you like that smash button. So uh, LDO extrusions are always good. Uh, depending on the light, there might be a slight color variation, but that happens with uh, anodizing. Two different batches never are the same. Roll in all, part of you wants to build printers. Like, I think it's my job now, so... Put these off to the side. Dead. Okay. Whew. Where's Doc? Doc, are you in chat? <laughs> Flying V, Godspeed. Thank you for coming, member. Okay, Doc. Calling out. I'm calling you out, Doc. Let's see, let me let me bug him on Discord. Link him the stream. I, 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 I'm not putting you under the gun, Lecter. I, I'm sure the parts are good, but we do need to get the uh, the one guy who's uh, who's the authority. <laughs> okay. Um, I lie. I've I've already looked at two because he sent me some parts after. Um, so those parts look really good. So, Robert, thank you for coming, a member. So, parts. Robert, you're blocking the screen. Get off the, get off the screen. Uh, PVG, 555, 20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for your dedication to the channel. Much appreciated, especially as first time building 2.4 soon. Hopefully, my kit will come soon. Um, I believe it's shipping out. Depending on Chinese New Year, I might get screwed because I might have to wait. Uh, but I got a 2.4 R2, 350 or 300 millimeter uh b 2.4 kit on the way in spaceship gray i think the frame is so. okay so let's look at parts usually the tool head parts are like the ones that you can judge quality on and this is glass filled abs so i'm not going to mix these up Okay, so, I don't know, that looks like a part to me. Good first layer, textured finish. Yeah. I don't want to break anything, but parts look good. Do they all fit together? I don't know yet, we'll find out. Seem to fit okay. So I got an M3 screw. Yep, screws go right in. Okay. They good. They are printed parts. They're of good quality. They look okay. I like the color. I I, I like the, the, the matte colors. I, I'm, I'm a fan of matte colors. Um, shiny works at times, especially sparkle. 
but I, I'm a fan of like matte colors. So this should be pretty good. Let's dock here. Oh, there we go. Doc's here. Hey, Doc. Wow, this this blows the color out horribly. I don't know. I think they're fine. Everything fits together pretty okay. Screws go through. I'll take some pictures and send them to you after. Not horrible. <laughs> No, they're fine. Honestly, these parts are fine. Which, considering we're starting to build, like, right now, um, we'll find out quick. But no, these parts all look fine. And it does have, let's go through them all. So we got the tool head, uh, Zed, uh, the screen with the heat sets pre-installed. Nice. We got your front idlers, your XY joints, panel parts, controllers, XY stuff, handles. I can't remember. Oh, these are for the LEDs. Skirts, got the skirts. No strings, everything looks clean. Bed stuff, I'm gonna need the bed stuff first. Panels, that. Yeah, everything looks good. Uh, Lecter, if you're still in chat, what machine did you print all these on? They look good. Yeah, parts look good. And you're gross, thank you for coming to remember. Greg, four, what was that? 449, appreciate it. Take it, EV. Caught your first live stream. Live! Hopefully you got the live stream live. It's not a live stream if it's not live. Then it's just a delayed podcast. Digging the bed stuff out. Because I think the bed is the first thing we built. Okay. The glasses gift. <laughs> yeah, I had some fun. I had to find a bunch of gifts. and what I wanted to... I'm running stream elements. And I, I spent like literally a couple hours setting everything up one night. And I, I wanted, like, custom emotes and whatnot when uh, people subscribe and whatnot. No, we're not building the whole thing in one go. We'll see how far we get today. So, um, how do you build a Voron? Well, we have a manual. So, obviously, I'm not going to have to... I'm not going to be able to reference this 100%. Um, I have a link here. These are all the mods that the Lecter V01 has. Um... So I may have to jump back and forth a little bit, but we do have our manual here. Uh, no giveaways today. So hopefully, maybe next stream. So uh, January, February is usually a low point in company marketing. So companies are less likely to uh, sponsor and do giveaways during January, February. So I'm trying though, I like giving away stuff. Okay, I can't talk with this gummy in my mouth. One second. These are one speed run. <laughs> well, I'm building it with a bunch of mods that I've never used before, so it'd be kind of unfair to speed run that. Okay, before you begin your journey, word of caution, in the comfort of your own home, you're about to assemble a robot. This machine can maim, burn, electrocute you if you are not careful. That is true. Yes, it's got weak motors and it doesn't really, you know, do anything but print, but it can hurt you if you goof, so don't so be careful. Uh, please do not become the first Voron fatality. There is no special Reddit flair for that. Please read the entire manual before you start the assembly. As you begin wrenching, please check out Discord channel for any tips and questions that may halt your project or progress. Uh, most of all, good luck, the Voron team. So yes, before you start your build, get everything together and go through the whole manual, okay? Uh, what I like to do is I go through the manual and as I go through it, I put all my heat set inserts in right off the bat, okay? For two reasons. One, you're gonna make sure you have all your printed parts and you're gonna kind of get to know what some of the stuff looks like. So later on when you're building, you're not like, oh shoot, what, where's that part at? 
So just, you know, double check, make sure you got everything. Go through the manual, read it. You might notice some stuff that might screw you up if you were to just go through it and just build as you go. So, Donald, thank you for oh, English. Thanks for coming to member. Okay. So part printing guidelines. Uh, they come with the kit, but if you need to print your parts yourself, here's all the setup or the our recommended settings. Print it forward if you wish to purchase printed parts from the community at a very reasonable price. There is a bit of a queue because a lot of people want to build Vorons, but we have the printed forward program. Links to the Discord, GitHub, the docs. Go to the docs. More, not enough people go to the docs. There's all kinds of information in here. So go to the docs if you got questions. Okay, hardware reference. So this is like, if you don't know what a button head cap screw, a flat head counter sunk cap screw is, yada yada. This is your reference right here. Uh, Charles, thank you for coming to member. And Pedro, 10 euro. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you for today's sponsorship. So yep, so these are all your terms, self-tapping screw, heat set inserts. So just so you know everything. Um, how a blind joint works. Um, if you, I have a video on my channel that goes into it, but this is, you know, we use blind joints for joining the frame together. Um, ball in Allen key, two millimeter hex driver. This is just kind of so you know. So if you've never built a printer before, and you know you you think these are um, these are IKEA furniture assembly tools, now you know it's an Allen key, which they were created by Frank Allen, who was the co-founder of of, Al of IKEA. So they do have some history with IKEA, but they are used for other things. So if you did not know that, now you know. Uh, extrusion reference uh, so these are what all your extrusions are because you're gonna have to bounce back and forth because you're gonna need to like okay go grab extrusion a well extrusion a 200 millimeters long and it doesn't have any holes in it I'm gonna start a hex brand with that name so it's funny um, I had an apprentice going for at least half a day years ago at work where I, I gave him a whole spiel that Allen keys were invented by Frank Allen the co-founder of IKEA and like I gave a whole backstory of how he came up with the idea because he was frustrated of not everyone not having the same tools at home and he wanted a universal assembly tool and like this whole shebang and the kid like bought it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> hey, this is what we're gonna build the frame. So component prep, heat set inserts, remove the link. So yeah, we're starting with the bed. So let me get my... So evil. Oh, it was fun. Now we have to tell people that you lied. I didn't lie. It's it's the truth. I speak the true truth. Okay, where is that fancy tool? I should have kept it out. Because I broke my old one, and now I have a new one. In hardware, oh, it's in the other box. That's the electronics box. Hardware box. There it is. And actually, this kit even does come with Allen keys, so. Evening from Germany. Uh, guten, guten Tag? No, Guten Tag's good day. Guten Morgen. I don't know. Hello in German. There we go. So, for those that don't know, uh, this kit and the LDO kit itself comes with a heat set tool. For putting heat set inserts into things. Okay. And it's got two heat set screws on here, and this is for setting your depth. So while it's cold, we'll get that set up. So I'm gonna need all my hardware, I think, at this point. So let me get this all out. Bed, don't need the 
I'll add my VHP tape to the pile of VHP tape. I've got like a million of them now. Don't need that. Magnets can stay in there. That's garbage. Okay. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. There you go. My French is better than my German. And my French isn't that good. So, take it as you will. Formbot kits, good or meh? Formbot kits are basically the bill of material in a box. Um, they're not on the same level as what you're seeing right now. This is a kit. This is like a kit where a lot of stuff comes pre-assembled, wiring's pre-done and everything. Um, the foreign bot kits are more of a bomb in a box, which isn't necessarily bad, but it's basically some guy went around and took everything you need to build the Voron and put it in a box. There we go. And yes, I did that while it was on. Let me see here. How's this camera angle? Yeah, that's okay. Knife goes in pocket. Martin, thank you for coming a member. Any sparks today? Hopefully not considering we're not doing any electronics. So if we have sparks today, something goofed. Which, I'll admit, it'll be good for ratings, but hopefully we don't have any sparks. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put some heat sets in. Do I have the music on? Yeah, I do have the music on. What do you guys want? Right now we have hi-fi. Do you guys want lo-fi, synthwave? Do you want me to change it up? Or are you guys happy with this music? Synthwave, synthwave, metal. Yeah, we'll do some synthwave. Do I have metal? I do have metal. Technically, there is metal. Um, rock. Christmas music. I could do Christmas. We could do dubstep or house. Yeah, I do synthwave. Everyone likes synthwave. Stream Beats Rock. You know what? I don't think I've ever listened to Stream Beats Rock. Let's do Stream Beats Rock. This is all royalty-free music, so I don't get DMCA'd, because dang you, Sony BMG, you ain't taking my money. Eurobeat. <laughs> okay, so this is like the very first step, and do not, do not skip this step, okay? If you skip this step... You will kick yourself in the butt later down the line. Uh, it's got lyrics. I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of, of lyrics while I'm talking. It kind of screws me up. So, yeah. Um, where are we at? Yes. So, remove the bottom link. Remove three to four links. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to. You're going to have to shorten this later. But basically, you're taking the top link off. And you are mounting it right away, okay? Because you'll snap it on later. But the thing is, the way this mounts, you will never be able to get screws in there because you're going to have an extrusion in your way, okay? So right off the bat, you're going to mount that right like that. Bada bing, bada boom, okay? And you're going to use m 38 which, if I'm not mistaken, there is a absolute insane amount of m 38s in this kit. There we go. I really should have cleaned out my, uh, uh, my God, I gotta clean these out. I've got a whole bunch of these magnetic dishes.
So I know I'm going to be using a million M38, so I'm just going to dump all these into here. Uh, I don't have a Kirigami bed. Um, this kit comes with a Kirigami bed, but I have a pre-production uh, version of this kit. So they, he got the stock after he sent me the kit. Um, so I don't have it, but if you buy this kit, it will come with the Kirigami bed, okay? And then for those curious, this is a WoW stick. It has absolutely horrible torque, but I keep a small bit in it for uh, M2s and M3 button heads. And then my ES126, which got more power. Oh. Hey. No, oh, no, I thought it died on me. Um, I use that for M3s and bigger. There are two different types of Igus. Uh, what do you mean there's two different types of Igus? Uh, there's two different types of Igus in the kit? I thought there was only one. There's this one. It's the only Igus you need. Horrible torque, no stripped out screws. That is true. Cheers from Siberia. Oh, okay. I think you're... No, well, actually, no. You wouldn't be the furthest away. The Aussies are. Uh, heck, did I ever get that magnet in my ES-126 replaced? No! They just sent me another one. Okay, so right now we need to put together our rails. So we have our mine the access hole, uh, centered rail guide. I'm gonna have to find that. Unplug this so it don't zap myself, burn myself. Uh, Thomas would like to see the Kirigami bed installed. I don't have it. It comes with the production kit, but I don't... I got a pre-production kit, so I don't have it. Uh, I gotta find the bed spacers. Or the helpers. Helper tools, where are you? Did you... Are they part of the kit? Hopefully they're part of the kit. Helper tools... Help for tools. Uh, no, they aren't. Well, that ain't good. tools. Okay, I guess I gotta print some. Ugh, one second here. How long am I printing, planning to print, or stream today? Uh, four hours-ish. Okay, so what extrusions? So these are the E-extrusions. So our E-extrusions are 200 millimeters and they got one hole and they're capped on the bottoms. Uh, only functional parts. Sorry. Okay. Let me find them. Unity. GitHub. Zero. STLs. Tool heads. Tools. Is it Tmap Mod, AB Pulley? Where is the. Am I blind? Tnut Mod, Shaft Spacer.
Where is the rail? Rail guy, there it is. There we go. Yellow. Put that up. What printer do we got? Ah, uh, we're not gonna use the trident. Toasty. Toasty. No, not PLA. Slice now. 12 minutes. Save. And we're gonna YOLO it. Okay. Okay, so we got our extrusions. I guess uh, New Zealand just doesn't exist like on most maps. What, New Zealand exists? Thank you for the $2. Uh, Tracy Moon, I, I missed the start. Everyone can begin now. So what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna throw them on and just kind of eyeball it and then I'll Tweak them once those are done printing. Okay. And where are my rails? Uh, send in Broder, four ninety nine. Is the Formbot trying to kit okay, or do you think you'll cause more headaches down the line? Um, it's printing. I printed um this guy last night on it. I don't know. Just a generic PLA print. I'm just trying to get hours on it before we do the final tuning. Um, but hardware-wise, the kit was fine. The the electronics are pretty basic. It, it's a pretty basic kit for electronics. Um, you're basically doing it all from scratch. It. it it comes with, you know, enough wire to wire everything up, but they're assuming, like, you're running wire directly from the tool head all the way down without, like, connectors, which is kind of a no-no. So, yeah. The hardware of the kit, though, was pretty okay. Oh, motors are quiet. There we go. So, I'm going to show you something um, that somebody mentioned to me. For greasing these up, where did I put it? Oh, where's the switch? Oh, did I? Uh, I think I threw it out. Yeah, I think I threw it out. Put it on this side. Yeah, I think I got rid of it. Dang it. I gotta go buy a proper syringe. I used like a an eye dropper in the video. Um, but basically for greasing these up, so these are really hard to get into. Um, just line it up over a hole and just force a bunch of grease in through the hole using like a, a large needle and it'll just mush everywhere. So since I don't have that, I'm just going to use some spray grease. If I can find where I put my spray grease. There we go. Yeah, here it is. Got it. So let's see if this works. Somebody suggested that I should try this the next time I grease up rails. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. So my super simple, um, you should, you can buy high gauge needles for this, like blunt needles. Um, I'm using a baby formula uh, or baby like medicine dropper because I used to have one and uh yeah check if the rail is MGM 9 or H it is MGM H I want to say yeah 9 H is it supposed to be C okay so let's see if this works so what I'm trying is basically Grease it up like this. Oh, that works perfect. You have a baby? I got a four-year... Well, he's four in March. 
Oh, that works perfect. Okay, yeah, to grease up your rails, just kind of splooge it in through a hole and it just kind of mushes right into everything. Yeah, that works perfectly. Oh, sweet. I'm totally doing that from now on. Should be 9C. Ooh, okay. I'll double check the dimensions after. I don't think we'll get that far on stream. And I think I have some 9C somewhere. Who's that behind me? What? Nobody behind me. Oh yeah, that works perfectly. I'm doing this from now on for these. Uh, Daniel, thank you for coming to member. Yeah, that works perfectly. Yeah, I'm doing that from now on to grease up rails. Now, granted, that only works if the rail's not on something, right? If, if your rail's, uh... Already attached to the printer. I don't think that's going to work too well. Looks right. Um, well, let me see. I got a. I should have a nine H. Somewhere. Oh. Yeah, it's nine H. Supposed to be a C. I'll, I'll see if I can swap it out. I should. I think I have one somewhere. Okay, so we got it all greased up, preventing mishaps during these uh, stoppers. So where are the stoppers at? electrical screwdriver it's an es120 this is a wow stick the wow stick sucks use an es126 but i use the wow stick for small stuff what the heck i got one I got one slide stop. <laughs> oh, the other one is. Okay, I got one slide stop. We'll fix that later. Bot's back. Uh, remove. Goodbye. Okay, so to prevent mishaps during assembly, rail ends won't be supported by stoppers. Up, uh, the rail. Some rails come with little plastic. You can leave those in place for the assembly. If your rail does not have these uh, screws, as use the last screw as a stopper. Try to use some tape to fix. So there we go. So we'll slide that in, and then M26. 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 Up. They are not in different bags. Um, I, I got one here. I don't know where the other one is, but I, I might have dropped it. They're not really needed, so... Let's leave the stoppers in and then I'll I'll dig for it later. I don't want to spend the whole stream looking for like a little part. Ooh, I need a smaller screwdriver. 
Actually, where is... There it is. Uh, don't tell me I lost it. Where is my little bit? I already got it on the thing. There we go. Yes, all Vorons can be printed on a V0. You can print all Vorons on a V0. Um, you just won't be able to print non-functional parts. So like stuff like the skirts, you won't be able to print. You'll have to wait till the printer is built and then print the skirts. All core pods. Yeah, all all non or parts that you need for a functional printer. And these are tiny. Uh, M2s. So small. Well, technically you, you could print the extrusions, but uh... I, I personally wouldn't. Um, you, you might have a bad time. Like it, it might not work out too well for you in terms of you know your actual print quality once the machine's done. Because I don't know about you. Like if I go through the trouble to build a printer, I want to be able to at least print okay. All those on center rail guides so 33 millimeters from the top so let me see if I could find I got got one stop unless I'm, I'm looking at something differently not that bag not that bag not that bag that bag. Pop that bag. Here with all these guys? Nope. 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 Oh, there, there they are. I was looking in the wrong bag. Found them. And by the way, in the manual, if you see something attaches to the rail, um, the instructions won't call out nuts that are inserted previous steps. So, if if you don't see it in the rail in the instructions, assume there's supposed to be a nut there. Yeah. So 38 from the top. Yeah, my. 
So tip, if you got one of these fancy uh, vernier calipers, okay, zero it, okay, then 38 millimeters, okay, I can live with 38.02, lock it, okay, so that's 38 millimeters. But see how much this is sticking out of the bottom? That's also 38 millimeters. So you can use that as a depth mic to set location. So make sure this is loose so I can move it. So you lock that in, you go there, and you just move your rail so it touches and you're good there's 38 millimeters uh, it's 38 at the top here oh wait what am I what am I doing am I looking at something oh these are the Y rails I'm looking at different whales I guess we're putting all the rails together so the Y whales are 38 and your Z rails are 33 so we're doing the Y rails right now. See what I mean about making sure you read the instructions? <laughs> I forgot that you put together your rails all first in the manual. So Z rails is 33, but they're doing Y. So. Yeah, so that goes there. Put some end stops on the ends. Uh, Philip, thank you for coming to member. So these aren't centered, okay? So that is the Y rails. And now we need the C extrusions for our Z rails. And the C extrusions are, they got a hole on each end and they're 200 millimeters long. hole on each end, just one hole on each end. There's one. And two. Alright. Double check. Let's see extrusions. 22. Hole on each end. Bada bing, bada boom. rails and with these ones it's 33 from the top okay. so we got 
gotta dig out two more rails. Grease them up, put them in. stoppers back in so we don't lose them last thing you want is your rails going flying everywhere there we go how is that printed part coming along we are at 95%. Okay. Good thing. Okay, time to grease these guys up. So, syringe right in the middle. And squeeze until grease comes out the sides. That works. That works. There we go. Paper towel. We're in the USA. Can I get an LDO kit? Um, if you're on the Voron Discord, go on the Voron Discord. Um, I believe the LDO channel has a pinned list of all the vendors. So reference that list. I don't live in the US, so I'm not even 100% sure. Uh, still hope for the community stream where you look at other printers. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I've got a bunch of builds for a while. The thing is I gotta figure out, I gotta download all the images, but I still wanna be able to credit people. But that might be a, a random night stream if I have a free night, which I have a lot of free nights now. Um, yeah. Just gonna keep hinting at the thing and not actually acknowledge the thing. <laughs> Print it solid. There you go. Print it solid. David's not here, so I, I, I can't go, David. Why do I have a lot of free nights? I don't know. I'm working. Give me free nights. I'm working. Took some time off work. Let's just say some shit went down last week. And, uh. I took some time off. Needed a little bit of a. I needed a little bit of a, a little mental break. So. Hanging out with you guys instead! Uh, what did I use? I, I just used uh, white lithium. I just used white lithium. I don't go all fancy. So for these ones, it's 33. Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fantastic, actually. I didn't actually quit. I'm just taking some time off. Just a little bit of unpaid leave. We'll see. See how it goes. The only re way it's even remotely feasible, though, is because of you guys. 
Like, if it was just the channel by itself, yeah, no. But between the support on stream, the Patreon memberships, the YouTube memberships especially, all of the, that combined, yeah, it makes it a technically possible, maybe? Kind of close? I don't know. One of these days, I actually have to sit down and do all the math about it. <laughs> Is that? Hymnus, 10 Canadian, thank you, appreciate it. Here for you, thanks as always. Yeah, I'm here for you guys, you're the ones who are learning. I'm just teaching you. And occasionally we print little boats. Okay. So, we got our Z right here. We got our Y right here. Not a machinist, a mold maker. Close, but I don't actually run a machine. I'm just the guy who... I'm the guy who uh, puts the molds together and takes them apart and fixes them and does all the manual work on them. Hot. Well, that's why it's 110. Hey, the door fell off. <laughs> okay, let's fix that. Right. Get back in there. You go there, you go there. There we go. I gotta reprint the doors on that. They don't seal up right. Hey, look! Spacers! go. Good old Papa Joey P's Prusimit coming in to the rescue. What would I recommend for a PI sheet? Um, depends where you live. In the U.S., like, CS Hyde is really good. Um, Fermio Labs, the black PI is pretty good. Um, the stuff that comes with the LDO kits is pretty good. Um, for Brico, hooked me up with plates for all my machines, and the stuff that he sent me is working really good. So... Yeah, see, uh, who is that? Tech Dad. So, in my case, I work, it, it's a tool shop that actually builds the molds. And, uh, bought out by a investment firm a few years back. And, basically, nobody can name anything that has improved over the past two years. And things just kind of keep going downhill. You know, do more with less, make us more money, while you lose, you know, profit sharing and... All the other fun stuff that used to make it a little worthwhile. And by the way, all the management is now garbage. And we fired all the good people because we didn't like them. And we fired a bunch of crappy people. Yeah. So. Pretty sure there were some guys playing that song from the Titanic on violins the other night. So I decided to take a little break. Sounds like the company who bought my job. Um, they they have a habit of doing it. I, I'm not going to name the company, but because uh, most people probably won't even know who they are. But they they buy up companies, they get the value of the company as high as they can, and then they sell it. So anything they promise the employees really, you know, is worth nothing because they're just going to sell the company anyways. And then the company that they sell it to, well, they're going to want to make their money back. So they're going to, you know, more cuts. <laughs> It's a vicious cycle. Dang foreign investment firms. Okay, so actually I gotta put some stoppers on this side. So, get 
these little guys here. So they went American, yep. Drop bottom and went downhill. It always goes downhill. I'll just remember so much minutes to drop it down. Oh, Daniel, ten dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. Winning for my last switch wire parts in the videos helped me a lot. That's good to hear. Hope your situation works well. I'm open to. That's why I'm just taking a break. I'm lucky I, I you know the trade is always higher. So it's not a big deal. Build your own empire here. I if I'm trying to build an empire here, I ain't got room for that. <laughs> I got no room as is. I can't I got no room for an empire in here. Well, that screw is gone. Ultra capitalist, pretty much. It is what it is. It is what it is. Let's focus on printers. Okay, so we've got that, that, that. Where's the nut? No stoppers on this end yet. Okay, so we got those extrusions made. So we got our Y extrusions, our Z extrusions. Put them over the yaw. And now we are going to put our bed together. So we need our F extrusions. M312s and M38s. So these are all the same, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So instead of, uh, on the LDO kit, the LDO kit simplifies things by having like all these extrusions, like these ones don't need holes in the side, but just to kind of make it, you know, less pieces in the bomb, they have holes on the side. So actually M38s with button heads on the bottom, so put those on first. Uh, what do you recommend? Badly warped bed on an Ender 3 changes all the time. Um, put something on the bed that's flatter than the bed itself. So put a piece of glass on it or uh, put something like a spring shield, uh, spring steel flex plate and put an inductive probe or some sort of probe. So either probe your bed so you can run a bed mesh or put something flatter on the bed itself. So either fix it in software or fix it in hardware. So that's the problem with a lot of the uh, the cheaper printers, is the actual um, hardware. Like the the beds are thin. The beds are thin. They're they're thin aluminum. They'll warp. They are gonna warp. Uh, don't clean and relube. Uh, the LDO ones, like I did it on the last kit. I I didn't even need the like. It was LDO rails are good. <laughs> Out of all the rails or uh, rails I've dealt with, LDO rails I've had the absolute least amount of trouble with. Uh, ASA does, I, you know what? I think ASA may string a little bit more than ABS, maybe? Not much more, but uh, not like PETG. PETG is just gummy. It's the devil's plastic. Hit okay, M38s in the back. Uh, so you say, no, Ryan, I, I did put more, I did lube them up. And they only come with a rust preventative from the factory, and the LDO rails, they come sealed, and there's really not much on them. So I just pretty much go straight to Lubin. Why the hate on PTG? Oh, uh, it's more of a joke at this point. It's kind of a meme, but 
PTG isn't as awesome, and PLA and ABS do more and better directions, in my opinion. It has its uses, but in a lot of uses, there are better materials. Outside of 3D printing, it's water bottles. Okay, wrench access. So, we got our G extrusion. That goes across the back there. Use a 2mm hex drive to tighten the screws behind the set screws. There we go. Nope, that does not fit. Allen key. Okay, so we're gonna put it on the thing. And for those curious, this is, um, if you're looking for something to build your printer on that's nice and flat, go get, go to like a, um, a countertop manufacturer. And hey, do you guys have any off cuts in the back that I could buy? I paid like 20 bucks and this is quartz and this is, you know, an eight layout table flat, but it's flat enough to square up a 3D printer. Okay. So, preload nuts, here we go, we're on to this part. So I think this is one of the parts that trips people up a lot. So what do we need? We need, what extrusion is this? It's a call out B extrusion. So the B extrusion is, uh, it's got nothing on the end. So it's, it's blank with tap holes on the end, so. on the end so there's one and two okay so we put those m3 tens on the outside Uh, any issues ordering from Sparta 3D be in the U.S.? Uh, from what I understand, no. You should be able to order just fine from... Shipping's gonna suck a little bit, but is what it is. Now you know how it feels. Shipping from Canada to the U.S. isn't as bad as shipping from the U.S. to Canada. That's the one that usually sucks. Okay, so preloading M3 nuts. Insert two additional M3 nuts in the highlighted spot. Okay, so we're going to put two in the middle here. And it's going to fly right through out to the other side. So what we're going to do is what? We need M3-6 with some nuts. So M36 uh, I tossed all my PTG after it ate a PLA sheet. It took a chunk out of the bed. Yeah, that'll, that'll do that. I will say that it, it is worth the order from Sparta. Um, simply, their, their filament, their ABS, their ABS Plus is amazing. It's good stuff. Like most, pretty much all my builds that I'm printing right now um, are using it. Because <laughs> it's, it's good stuff. Okay. In there. Uh, 
So note to self, take the screw out of the end so you can actually put these nuts in proper. There we go. And another one. So we got two screws here. Okay, so our bottom one here is a B extrusion. We got two nuts with uh, screws in them and then two just floating in the middle. And then on the top one here, it's pretty much the same thing, only just the two nuts and M6 screws or M36. Uh, any familiarity with ABS from BASF? No. Fortunately, no. Problem is, like, living in Canada, it's... Usually, there's, like, a few brands that are good price and they're just good. So, most people stick with them. Because a lot of that other stuff gets kind of pricey quick. Okay. Orientation and assembly. Uh, read the next four pages before continuing to keep the assembly image consistent and easy to follow as possible. We are showing them in an upright orientation. For ease of assembly, recommend it to assemble a Z axis, laying them flat. Okay. So we put those two on top with our Z, which are these ones. Okay. Preload a bunch of nuts, put the top on, screw them in, and then the H extrusions. Okay. So here we go. So we'll loosen these up. Okay. Now the thing is, where do these live at? Does it give me sizes or any distances? There we go. Okay, so 58 and 54. So 58 and 54. Uh, best bang for the buck. Um, Sparta 3D, and then you you always have like the stuff on Amazon. You have your your hatch box and you know that kind of stuff too. Okay, so Go to voicemail. Okay, and then 54, so we'll... Now, here's the thing with the, these... Uh, bed extrusions, you can always... Basically, I've always found you, you have to kind of play with them a little bit sometimes. Um, so just make sure you have one of them very squared up. And then you can use the second one to adjust it. Like loosen the second one and once you have the bed on, use like one as your Bible and then just kind of make the other one work to it. Because you may have to finagle a few things right now.
Okay, and then we put, so we have that. Got the bottom on. So we gotta preload three M3 nuts and on each side. Dang it. <laughs> I always do that. Always do that. Okay, now I gotta take them all out because I think I got one stuck in there. Yeah. There we go. Okay. One, two. One, two. And one, two. Now, I'm going to put some screws in there, so I don't lose them this time. So what you can always do is whenever you have these like captive screws that are just kind of floating around, and you're going to use them for a later step, just throw some screws in, just to kind of hold them in place, so they don't like fall down and get like stuck underneath another extrusion. Greetings from Germany. Greetings! Don't lose your nuts. Yes. Sorry, Merv. The uh, the filter got your uh, your comment. Apparently, YouTube doesn't like the word nuts. Same thing, so 58 millimeters on the one and then 54. Kill the bot. What? There's another bot? Ah, jeez. See, at least they're just spamming like one uh, wanted or spam report. Okay. I wish there was it was easier to do like a one-click report with YouTube, but it's not. There we go. Merv, thank you for coming a member. And D foreign. D foreign? Damn, damn foreign. Thank you for coming a member. Okay, there we go. Top on, screw that together. H extrusions. Okay. So what are we at? What are the H extrusions? H extrusions are uh, and these are temporary, I believe. Uh, same thing, so just tapped on the ends.
Okay, so put those on, build on a flat surface. And this is where that granite counterplate comes into uh, use. That one is... Uh, That ain't tap deep enough, that one. Yep, I gotta fix that one. Oopsie doodles. Is there any reason to not use 26 for Trident for end stops, fans, LEDs? Um, I, I would say try and stick with 24 just cause that's spec. So something to add to your kit, make sure you have like an M3 tap on hand and an M5. Cause you never know when you act, you know, most of these are machine tapped. Like it's all done on a machine. Every now and then you'll, you, you might get one that, you know, you just gotta clean it up a little bit. Sometimes a machine will tap it and there'll be a little bit of a, a chip or something stuck in there. It happens. It happens. One hole that needs to be cleaned up, I'm not gonna really judge on. Was well, giving retapping after three extrusions and used M8. M8. Oh, switch wire? Go. Who was that that called me earlier? Left a voicemail. I'll figure it out later. So just so you guys are aware, these extrusions are only temporary. These are just kind of to hold everything together and allow you to square it up while you get your bed in position. Oh, that's odd. So this one extrusion here was not tapped deep enough. What time is it anyway? Six o'clock? Started at four. See how far we get.
Really wish I had an air gun in here. Like, I have one. Actually, uh, no, I don't have one anymore. I had one. It was loud. Not really something you want to use inside. How are my CAD skills? Um, I can make brackets for stuff. And I can, I can import existing things into Fusion and kind of mash them together. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, we have this now. So, symbol a square on a square or... Correction. Symbol a square on a gla glass or granite surface to ensure... Get as square as possible, tighten the screws and the left extrusion first. So, um, this might be too big, but having a machinist square at this point is really handy because you can check to make sure that your frame is square, which, uh, actually, I'm pretty sure I am. Square enough. So, machinist square is very nice to have. And then at this point is where you would go and make sure everything is spaced off correctly. Who keeps Mr. All the pop-ups. Okay. So, what do we need? We need 58 millimeters and 54 for a total of 127. So, you can get all fancy, or you could just, you know, eyeball it with the uh, the Mark One eyeball. Which uh, most people have, so we're just going to roll with that. Five, six, seven, eight. That's good. And then fifty four millimeters. Good. Well, that's not good. Oh, uh, you know what? I am so sorry, guys. I am so sorry. I can't believe we've gone this far. I, ca I can't believe we've gone this far. Hey, buddy. Come on. I, I'm sorry. Can I treat? There you go. Doggo break time. Open them up. Have you been good? Have you been good? Okay, can you shake paw? Good boy. Can you shake the other paw? Good boy. Speak. 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 Go. Woof. Speak. Speak. Ah, I know. You know to be quiet. Good boy. No, he 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 knows to be quiet. So every time we try to get him to speak, he used to do it. But he he knows to be quiet. Like over the last, he used to be louder. And then we had Calvin, and uh, we got him to shut up because you know having a barking dog with a toddler is not fun. So 
So he's kind of like, I'm not supposed to be not loud. How old? Ah. Uh, nine? I want to say nine. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we got to put some stoppers on the bottom here. Just kind of lock these in to make sure we're good, actually. That is going to annoy me to no end if I don't fix that. It doesn't line up on the bottom here. There we go. How did that pop up there not in chat? Who is that? Oh, took a minute. Bash Coder, 999. Good boy. He is a good boy. He is a very good boy. Except when he's not a good boy. Because he's big and he's loud. Nothing like sneaking home with the little guy asleep, getting him to bed. It's all nice and quiet. And then somebody knocks on the door and he freaks out. Somebody's here. Somebody's here. I just want to thank you. Your stream inspired me to build one little is there my own. The build was finished last week and so far 70 hours in print time. 70 print hours in a week. Nice. Yeah, they are uh, surprisingly good out of the box, I will say. Am I going to finish this build tonight? No. No. We're going to go until my headphones die and then we're going to call it. So that's usually about four hours. Need to uh, get get at least a few streams out of it. Um, so this technically wasn't an LDO kit. It has an LD a lot of LDO parts, um, but it is a uh, a kit from Lector.com. I have a link in the description. It does have a bunch of extras. Um, as I said, it the kit if you buy it comes with the uh, Kiragami bed mod, which is like a, a folded sheet steel bed instead of having to build the bed. My kit does not have it. It's a pre-production kit. So they didn't arrive in time, so I don't have it. So I gotta, gotta roll my own. Speaking of, time to put the bed on. Okay. So, use thread locker. Carefully apply a small amount of thread locker to the screws. Oh, I guess we use thread locker now. Um, I did not know we were using thread locker on these. I can't remember. Do I have thread locker? I've got the next best thing. Hard Nails Extreme Wear. Sally Hansen. It's good enough. Okay, so what do we need for this? M28. M28. M26. M28. M310, M26, okay, well I got two bags of M26, I'm assuming one of these is a mislabel. M26, M26. There's M28. Oh, there we go, M28. Yeah, extreme is only extreme when it's spelled with an X. You need that, you know, extreme to make it extreme. Otherwise, it's just, it's just not extreme. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Yeah, I, I know there's different M, the M two sixes. Yeah, one, one are button head and one are socket heads. And I can't remember which ones are which.
button head. Yeah, I use button heads. Yes, okay, I use the right ones. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. So if I remember, these are a pain to get into their respective I'm gonna need the Allen keys that come with the kit because I don't know where my little one is. Try it in a 2.4. That is a very hard question to answer because neither is better than the other. Um, they both are, they're both fine. Um, it depends what kind of Zen motion you want. Do you want a three point bed uh, that moves up and down or do you wanna go all fancy with a, uh, a flying gantry. Because um, the gantry, the actual gantry, the XY motion on both is exactly the same now. Okay? Well, will be soon once 2.4 goes live. But, uh, or 2.4 R2 goes live. But, yeah, they're, they're pretty much... Hello? Can you hear me now? What the heck happened there? Okay, um, so the mic died, which it sh shouldn't have. I had it plugged in for charging. Yeah, it was charged. Okay, uh, let me fix this the, uh, the super awesome getaway. We will make it work. We have technology. We have technology, don't worry. Don't worry. I will just now be shackled with my wireless mic to the computer with a six foot USB cable. There we go. Remember, it is not a Nero 3D patented stream if something is not completely scuff. I can't remember what I was talking about before the stream, uh, before I lost mic, so. If I was midway answering a question, re-ask the question. Where are my tweezers at? Uh, when it's done. Basically, a lot of the work on it right now is the manual. Because the, the V2 needed the most work on the manual. It's the oldest manual, and it's basically like being redone from scratch. And manuals are a surprising amount of work. But yes, the, the gantry on the 2.4 R2 and the Trident is exactly the same gantry. Like, literally exactly the same. The only difference is there are uh, belt mounts on it. Okay, so... A little, little bit of Loctite. And by Loctite, I mean... Extreme nail polish. And you don't need to go crazy. A little dabble, do ya? Just enough to wet the threads, essentially. Uh, not much work when you have Dunar do everything. Oh, he, that's the thing. He does it, a lot of work on it. I mean, I would help, but I don't think he needs my super awesome MS Paint skills. Uh, Micron when, whenever it shows up and I have time. So the plan is basically, um, 
this will be uh, Tuesday streams. Um, it depends how many streams this takes to build. Because it's pretty much just building it. And then that's pretty much it. Wiring electronics shouldn't take too long. So we're going to get this built. Trident is Saturday. So next Tuesday will be um, zero. And then Saturday might be zero again. And then Trident, or onto Micron, which I got to start printing parts for that soon. Uh, Thomas, 1499, appreciate it. Uh, didn't have a square ease. Yeah, I have a, uh, an ES-126 right here. Um, I use this for the bigger screws, though. I don't like using that on button heads because it has a tendency to um, strip them because it's got a little, a little too many, uh, a little too much power. Is the Enraged Rabbit Care Feeder? The Enraged Rabbit Care Feeder is compatible with any printer running Clipper um, and even uh, Duet now. Now, technically, you do need an end stop um, or a filament sensor between your extruder and your hot end. Um, so the afterburner supports that. Um, so you would have to, you know, if you're using a non Voron printer, you can make it work. Um, you can either kind of bypass it and not use one, but it's not as reliable if you just kind of... Because it doesn't know when it's loaded, essentially. You, you, you need that filament sensor to know that it's loaded past the, the extruder in your tool head, right? It's not a Bowden setup. Um, you can not use it and kind of hope for the best, but honestly, eh, not worth it. What is my job? Nobody... I don't know. I, I'm... I'm just a dude. I got on the team back when it was just, you know, oh, hey, you built a Voron, you're on the team. <laughs> I kind of got grandfathered in. I guess, I guess you could say I'm the media guy. I make the videos. I break stuff in testing. And I did the, uh, I did the standalone jetpack. So if you look at the jetpack, the standalone version, I did that. That is my contribution of CAD work to the Voron team. Public relations, yeah. I'm the guy on Twitter everyone yells at whenever somebody thinks Voron did something dumb. And then everyone ats me. And I'm like, what's going on? The hot end shroud. Uh, that is for the Revo for a stealth burner. So that 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 shroud, uh, let me find. Do I have it here? Yeah. So he's asking about the Revo mount for the Voron Revo. Okay. So for the Voron Revo, this guy, the stealth burner mount for it has the uh, little caricature of Sanjay on it, kind of as a tribute. That's only for uh, the Revo. So only the Revo mount will have that. I'm always paranoid of stripping these small screws. Anyone using a mosaic palette? Um, I think a few people have used the p Pallet 2. You can't use the Pallet 3. Pallet 3 doesn't work with Clipper. It's it's severely gimped. It doesn't work uh, properly because it, it's it can't communicate properly. Okay, so we've got those on. So now we got to put our bed on. So we got to preload one M3 nut on each side. This is the part of the build that is just annoying. I will flat out say it right off the bat, getting this bed on is annoying. There's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is the part where you gotta finagle with, you know, captive nuts and it's, it's... When people complain about the uh, V0 build, this is like the one of the more annoying parts. So we got two M2s in the bottom and then six in the back. Okay. 
one. Two, and then six in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spec torques. Well, if, if somebody, you know, you can easily do torques if you want. Thing is, Allen keys are much more universal. Not everyone has uh, Torx bits. Because there's some areas you gotta go, like, go down a long hole to tighten, like especially on here. Like an actual bit might not fit through all this to tighten it, so. Correct. This kit will come with the Kirigami bed. My kit does not have it because it was not in when they sent it to me. I have a pre-production kit. Okay, so now we put the bed on and we screw it all together. Okay, so M3 eights. This guy go. Oh, other way. Okay. Try it in 2.4. Pick which whatever one has the bed you like. You want your bed to move or do you want your bed to stay still? If you want your bed to move, try it. If you don't want your bed to move, 2.4. Otherwise, they print exactly the same. Magnetize you use it to push the uh, the nut over to where the screws got to go, and then you go to move the screw out of the way or the Allen key out of the way, and it's like no. Somebody's going to win this printer. So, I'm trying to build it, you know, pretty good. I guarantee less than 5%, less than 5% strip screws. And only 3% bulk weight in dog hair. And remember, I'm not saying it helps your chances, but it doesn't hurt to like that smash button because, you know, it, it's not going to hurt your chances, but it's, it, you know, you never know. Okay, and then on the back, we got to use a ball end driver, fasten the left screw. So now we got to put M312s. Abraham Gonzalez, $4.99, appreciate it. Uh, 
now comes the annoying part. M312s, M310s, M312s. Exactly like that smash button. It's not rocket appliances. Okay, let's see. Can I get that in there? You're saying your chances are your chances. Exactly, your chances are your chances. Liking the smash button will affect your chances. There's a chance it might, you know, affect it in the good way or the bad way, but it, it may affect your chances. Chances for what? Somebody's going to win this printer at some point. There will be a, uh, a charity stream in the future uh, for the uh, Sanjay Foundation, or whatever E3D ends up calling it. And uh, during the charity stream for that that I will be holding, this will be one of the prizes. And people like winning things, so I'm assuming somebody wants to win it. And it's the fully built one. Like you're just gonna, I'm just gonna throw this in a box and send it to somebody. Okay, now the fun part, cause I gotta get this chain out of the, well. The part where you can't see what you're doing. Flashlight. Okay, so there's that. Moses 1999 awesome get to catch an afternoon stream how are you I am doing fantastic my friend is that one part of the build where you wish you had three hands if I could find my pliers and I or my needle nose or my tweezers and I can't find them. Come on, flip up. Yeah, of course everything's magnetized now. 
So the M3 nut went and fell off the end of the extrusion there. There we go. Okay, so now I gotta figure out how to get that into there. This, this one part right here is the most annoying part of the build, is this one single M3 nut. Because you have to get through everything and line it up and you have like nothing to push it with, but I got it. And then of course get your ball Allen key out without damaging anything. There we go. Okay, so yeah, it's this one right here. That one on the left is an absolute pain to get in. The rest are okay. Oh great, I forgot to take two nuts out. Or put two extra nuts in there. Hey, guess what? Take it apart. We are missing the two nuts in the middle for the, uh, the M... The trap. Dang it. It's okay. Easy fix. Take out the side that is easier to work on. So take that screw out. Oh no, exactly. It's not a V0 stream if you don't forget to put nuts in at some point. Now, load those in. I really wish I knew where my pliers went. Let me take a look and see if I can find my tweezer, tweezers. Tweezers. I always lose them. I don't know what it is. I always lose my tweezers. I just need to buy a pack of like 10 of them and just leave them everywhere because I always end up losing them. The bot. Dang bots. Goodbye. Be gone, bot. Report. Spam. Goodbye. Okay. What's the problem with the... I, YouTube banning people is like a four-step process. Click the name, click what they're doing, report bot. Are you sure you want to report? Yes, bot reported. Okay. Just give me a one button to do it. We got four in there. Put one screw in. Slide that over just a hair. screw it. How do I like the rep box? Oh, it's good. I'm using it to feed the uh, Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, the, the multi-filament guy. So, it's up there. 
and uh, it's worked pretty good. My my buffer system, yeah, I wish it was working a bit better. All the issues I have with the enraged rabbit are nothing to do with the enraged rabbit itself. It's all feeding issues, and like I wish I could do the carrot patch with the buffering, um, recoilless buffer or whatever the heck the system is called. But uh, I don't have the room for it, so I kind of have to make do with what I got. Okay, so we got the two nuts in the middle. And tramming. Check for binding. Okay, so now we make sure the bed uh, goes up and down. Which I can take these guys out now. And you basically want to make sure that the bed moves nice and smooth. It's not binding anywhere. And then if it is... Um, I recommend, if you're looking at it from the front, loosen this far rail, okay? Because when you did all your measurements, you went from here to here, and then you measured from here to here. So if anything out due to stacking tolerances, it's probably this extrusion. So what you would do is you would go to the top, you loosen that screw and that screw, kind of find its home, tighten that up, then come to the bottom, tighten that up. But we got no binding, so we should be good. Build my next forearm without the manual. I've done that like four times already. Uh, V226 here has been every iteration of a V2. None of them were built with manual. Even my V00 was built without a manual originally. Okay, so Z axis, trimming. We got that. So now we're taking those extrusions out. So these extrusions on the side here were pretty much just there to uh, give us a jig to light everything up. And now we can get rid of them. So make sure your Z extrusions are nice and tight first before doing that. They're, they're, they're gonna be holding everything together. What size clone trooper helmet you can make on a Voron? Um, well, depends on how much do you need on the XYZ because you can go I don't know 250 350 well that's like 330 tall boys and eyeball we don't recommend going beyond 350 um, machine was not designed with that in mind and it's core XY which doesn't scale that well at large sizes you get diminishing returns so. 350 yeah um, so this one, that's a 250, so that's 250 millimeters cubed. Yeah, you get about 220, 230 on the Z. This one's 350 by 350 by 250 on the Z. And then the big one back here is 330 by 330 by 380, I think, on the Z. Yeah, 380 on the Z, roughly. I think I can push 390, but the, the drag chains get pretty tight up top. But that, that one's an oddball size because I use an old, an old frame. If you go to vorondesign.com, you can pick whatever printer and there's a configurator. So you could tell it what size you want. But we recommend sticking with like 250, 350, or, three, or 250, 300, or 350, depending on the machine. This little guy is only 120. Like, this is a V0. So it's only this big. <laughs> I swear, that V0 just exists now to be an example of how small a V0 is. I can't remember the last time I printed anything on it. Okay, so now we got to preload some nuts. So, that goes like that. So we need six nuts up top. One in the back. Yeah, people have gone bigger with these Vorons. Um, we just, you know, as a matter of principle, we just don't recommend beyond that size. Just because the machine has all, it's mostly printed parts and aluminum extrusions, right? It's, it's not meant to be a large format machine. You know, let's be honest, 350, most people don't big, need 350. Six. 
one in the back. And then I gotta put six underneath. So what we're gonna do is just kind of put some captive screws in here for now, just so we don't lose these ones. So I'm just throwing in some temporary screws right now so these nuts don't go flying out because they're just captive nuts. And then six on the bottom. actually hoping the goal today is to basically get the frame built. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I don't need more of those. I need two of these. So that, that's kind of like the uh, the goal for today, is at least get to the point where the frame is built. And then we can move on to the XY gantry next stream. Does it account as an ant printer? Um, well, it is small. Okay, so now we are going to put our uh, frame together. Flip it over. So we're gonna need some e-extrusions. And the e-extrusions are, which ones are these? So the extrusion has one hole. The extrusion, two extrusions, and then what was the other ones? Oh yeah, I already got the other ones. The other ones are right there. Okay. going to kind of put them in not super tight right now just kind of eyeball it because we'll uh we'll make a proper tight and squared up later because right now this is not a square so there's no point trying to square it up when will the next stream be um i stream uh, well now tuesdays uh, but i normally stream every saturday night 8 p.m is my normal stream time uh, that will be Trident next stream. So next Saturday, we're going to finish up the Trident. So actually this Saturday, we're going to finish up the Trident. And then uh, next Tuesday, we'll carry on with this guy. And then after that, it'll be the next Saturday and whatnot. Until we start the Micron build. And then a V2. And then I might switch between the two, or depending on how much room I have, I'll probably do like once, one machine at a time. Uh, 3D PM Mish. Hello! Okay, so we got that. And then H extrusions on the back, which I think are the two that we had. Nothing crossbar in the back, right? Yeah. Okay. M3 tens. Yeah, M3 tens. Well, technically, I should have been finishing up another stream, but the only reason I'm streaming this build right now is because the uh, store that provided this kit is a. Uh, a European store 
and my normal Saturday night streams at 8 p.m. is a little late for them. So, instead of wrapping up that guy right there, which needs panels and input shaper tuning and pressure advance and a bunch of other tuning, um, we're going to do that on Saturday. And I'm starting this build today so that the Europeans can see because they're sleeping usually. Uh, there's a list in the description, uh, Lewis, that has um, what's different with this kit. So it's basically a bunch of add-ons. Um, oh, am I going to have to tap that one? Yeah, I got to tap that one. What the heck's going on with LDO? I got to tap these. Why do I got to tap these? I normally never have to tap LDO extrusions. appreciate as a European. I know, I try to look out for you guys. I try to do the, the European friendly streams when I can. Yeah, I'm gonna tap through these just to clean them up. Just to clean them up. Nice printer collection. Thank you. I need more room. <laughs> uh, the frame is from one of the first batches. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, the very first batches of LDO frames had... Uh, need to be chased a little bit. So this is... Again, this is a pre-production kit. So... If you buy a kit, it'll be all new stuff. Uh, midnight, it's, it's already midnight over there? What time is it now? It's 6.40. I am starting to get a little hungry. I'm thinking I got, I got a leftover chicken parm, I think. printers multiply that they do I gotta start printing micron parts soon actually I should probably start that tonight 39 in Oslo Oof. I got candy I do have candy but I don't they're hard candies I don't want to be sucking on a hard candy while I'm streaming and talking you guys don't need to hear that Right now it's only 640 here. Shelf set. That's what I'm tempted to do. Well, I've already got like, I'm gonna have printers down there, there, got down there, there. The problem is like the ceiling is literally right there. It's a, the ceiling in this room is lower. So I, I like just out of frame is the ceiling. <laughs> I can't go up much higher and these are kind of tall printers for the most part. Like, I can't put another shelf on top of them. remodeling series soon well it, it's I don't really need to remodel I'm actually happy with the layout I, I need to clean I've got like I put in a, a bench here in the middle and it's like hey I'm gonna have a little bench here so I can you know I have room to work and um, as you can see I don't have room to work anymore on that bench it, it's become storage like everything else has a habit of coming around here <laughs> dig the floor deeper why didn't I think of that Wait, are you in a house? Yes, I'm in a house. I'm in my basement. I'm not Joel. I don't have a fancy studio to work in.
Even the basement in Canada is a real cheap option. <laughs> Well, not yet. I have actually looked. I, I, I won't lie. I'm, I'm not at the point where, you know, I could justify getting a, a, a studio. But I have actually looked local to see, you know, what if, you know, how much it would be to rent a little shop or something and I can't find squat. And what I can find is, like, old commercial that is like, yeah, we want, like, $30 a square foot. And I'm like, you knew. <laughs> Andrew Rogers, $10 for the floor lowering fund. <laughs> okay, so we got the H extrusion, so we need to space that 37 millimeters. Hey, look, it's kind of looking like a printer, sort of. Moses, floor the floor, nine ninety nine. <laughs> I wish. If only we're so simple. If only. You guys, start tuning in the stream next week. I got a jackhammer out. Will this PLA printed jackhammer work? Let's find out. Which filament is best at handling vibrations from a jackhammer? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like that smash button. Garth, thank you for coming to member. Sanity 50. Appreciate it for the shovel to dig the floor deeper. If only it were so easy. I need to redo my kitchen before I, uh, I start dropping this, the floor. <laughs> right, dang it. So much of this build would be easier if you had three hands. There we go. What do you think of the rat raid jackhammer? <laughs> If that's a real thing, I'm going to laugh. Can't wait for the minion kit to show up. That's going to be fun. That will be a fun build. Okay, so we got that. So now we need to flip it upwards, like some sort of TIE fighter thingy. Uh, and preload some nuts. So we got, what, four on the bottom. Oh, man. This is the, I always, this picture always screws me up. Okay, so we got four on the bottom. on that side, so one, two, three, four. Three, four. Okay, and then four on the bottom of the other side, and it looks like three on the side. Okay. One, two, three, four. 
three on the side. One, two, three. Okay. Chain visibility. We won't be showing the chain in later pictures. Okay, so we gotta mount the other end of our chain. There, because you're not gonna be able to mount it later. That. That's an M36. Which I always misplace the M36 bag. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a V minion build. I have a uh, mechanical kit coming. I'm going to be providing my own electronics because I have enough of them. I don't need uh, any more electronics. And uh, we will be building a V minion. I got to print all the parts for it too. And we're. It being a minion, it's gonna be lemon, f lemon something yellow. Lemon sparkle yellow, I believe, is what we're rolling with. So. That's the one you forgot. Everyone forgets this. Everyone forgets to put the uh, the end of the drag chain on because you can't skip it, okay? If you forgot to put it in, you can't after you put the bottom plate in because right now we're going to be putting a bottom plate in. So let me uh, put some more nuts in here before I forget. So we need three on this side. One, two, three, and then up top, I need three on top. One, two, three, and then three on the other side on top. One, a two, a three. Okay, and now we need to put the deck panel in. So let me find the deck panel. Booyah. Like a glove. Frame B extrusion. And I think the B extrusion is just a regular extrusion. Dang it, I screwed up a B and a C, I think. Shoot. Okay, one second, one second. Did I screw up, where did I screw up a B and a C? One of these ones, no. Nope. Oh no, I... no, shoot. Seriously? Those are all for the top hat. Ah, uh, shoot. So, the extrusion... Oh wait, no, what am I doing? What am I doing? The extrusion's got no holes. The extrusion, no holes. Uh, 
Oh yeah, okay. So B extrusion and then D extrusions on the front. Okay, so preload. How many? Four M4 nuts. And then put a M10 on the ends. Uh, do I still think it's worth it to source? It really depends on what your local availability is. With shipping the way it is, it's kind of screwed over a lot of the advantage of sourcing your own because how much shipping costs once you factor in shipping for everything. So. It used to make a lot more sense to uh, source your own, but nowadays not so much, unfortunately. Those ones go there. Okay. And then D extrusions are, I think, tapped in the bottom, or correction, four holes in the bottom, and then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're good. We're good. Yeah. Night, Chris. to tap these. Yeah, I'm going to tap these. I'm just going to tap these right off the bat. I know I'm going to have to tap these. I'm going to have to tap these. Well, free shipping isn't really a guaranteed thing on Alley anymore. Because it used to be back in the day, right? You, you would source everything on Alley and you would just slow boat everything and it would you know everything would show up in like three months but you'd be able to source everything pretty cheap but now with how much it costs to source everything or ship everything there's a reason people order kits now don't break a tap Like, I remember it used to be, you used to be able to build a V2. If you were really good at it, at like sourcing bargains and whatnot, you used to be able to build like a V2. And we're talking back in like the V2.1 days. Um, I've seen people do it under a thousand. But that was back when you used to be able to get extrusions really cheap because you would buy like a pack of three and then a pack of four. And like, it, it, it used to be much better. In the before four times, before the Rona, if I tried using a ratchet, I'm not a huge fan of ratcheting uh, tap or tap handles. Uh, they always break. Like the ratcheting mechanism always breaks on me. I'm not a fan of them. The biggest problem with kits is you have no control over them, right? So you know, if Formbot decides to switch vendors for their rails, and all of a sudden you get crappy rails, you you have no control over that. What is it I'm doing now? I'm just chasing the holes. This is These rails here are from an older batch of LDO, and you just have to chase the holes and tap them a little bit deeper sometimes. So I'm just cleaning them up, running a tap through, just so I don't, you know, strip the screws. Last thing you want is something to get seized. Like it's aluminum, I could throw it this, I could chuck this in a drill if I really wanted to, but rather not risk it.
roughly 1200 USD for my 2.4 around the start of running. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm starting to get hungry. And I got leftover chicken parm and rice, I think, for dinner. Okay. What's the difference between the V0 and the V01? The V01 uh, direct feed tool head is an option now versus uh, Bowden only on the V0, uh, 0, 0.0, and a bunch of quality life and assembly improvements. So build a V01. So if there's a, a if you look at the name of the, the printer, there's, you know, the V0, the V1, the V2, the Trident. If there's like a, a point and then a number after it, so it's like V2.4, V1.8, the, the, the point whatever is the newest revision. So the, you know, V0.1 is the newer revision of V0.0. But when you look at V1 and V2, they're different printers. Okay, it's just the name. That's why we stopped calling them V0. Well, we still call it V0, V1, and V2. But that's why Trident is Trident and not V1.9. Because everyone got confused thinking, well, why is there a, a one, why would there be a V1.9 if V2.4? is around. It's like, well, V2.4 is actually the oldest war on right now. So now we're giving them names. Voron Trident or 2.4 be better than an Ender 3? Yes. <laughs> an Ender 3 is a very basic printer. There's really not much to them there. V Wheel, which in my opinion, V Wheel is like the worst mo motion system that you can have on a printer other than using like Home Depot drawer um, sliders. Because here's the thing relying on V Wheels, aluminum extrusions are not a precision thing. They, they aren't. Aluminum extrusions are just extruded aluminum. There is no guarantee at all that they are straight, that they don't curve, that they don't twist. They're they're just aluminum extrusions. They're, they're not a precision thing. They're not meant to be a precision thing. Oh, that did not tap deep enough. Uh, where's Gizmo? Hello! A bunch of people are becoming members. Why am I not seeing that on YouTube? Wait for the YouTube to buffer? Or is that just keep popping up? Uh, main overlay. Properties. Refresh cache. There we go. Which form would I recommend? It depends what you want. How big do you want to print? Do you want to print enclosed? Do you want, uh, like, you know, this is a good, if you just print small things and you just want a cool little secondary printer that's fully enclosed for like ABS little things, a V0. If you want something bigger, you know, you got the Trident, you got the V2. If you want a bed flinger, that's Core XZ because Core XZ is actually pretty cool. Um, you got switch wire. Um, if you got a bunch of old eight millimeter rods sitting around, you could do a legacy. One, one thing a lot of people don't seem to realize, um, Vorons aren't like, we're not trying to sell them. We just kind of design them because they're fun to design. Like the switch wires, it's a Core XZ 
printer, right? It's it's a belted Core XZ printer. Um, the reason it exists is because RCF was bored during COVID and just kind of during the first lockdown and just kind of whipped it up in two months. That's why it exists. It's, it's not meant to fill a niche or, oh, we, we the market needs a Core XZ printer. It's like, nah, I'm bored. I'm going to make a Core XZ printer and make it actually practical. And that's what he did. And now we have one. <laughs> When you're, when you're not selling something, you're allowed to just kind of design stuff for fun and not have to worry about, you know, oh, the, the, there's not a big enough market for this printer. I don't know if we can make it work. The margins are too slim. You don't need to worry about margins if other people are paying for it. I'm totally eyeballing these extrusions square <laughs> play with it later there we go look at that it's starting to look like a printer so we got the d extrusions verify nuts okay so we got six nuts up top one two three four five six three nuts on each side one two three one two three Two nuts in the middle there, yep. Three nuts on that side, yep. Three nuts on that side, yep. And then four nuts underneath, yep. Okay, flip it over, look on the back. Okay, we got one nut, three nuts, three nuts, four, four, four. Six, yep. Okay, I think we're okay. And three. Yep, we're okay. Make sure make sure to count your nuts. Make sure you got your nuts. Okay. A B drives. If you don't have enough nuts, you're gonna have a bad time. Next lockdown, Voron Shower. Joke's on you, that thing's been operational for months. Extrusion, extrusion, and cross extrusion. Okay. Good there. That and that. So, we'll get our AB drives mounted. So, we gotta do some heat set stuff. Put my crappy soldering iron in. Yeah, that's a, that's a, um, is it a sticker or is it, I don't know if it's silk screened on, but yeah. And remember, somebody's winning this printer. I'm not keeping it. Someone luckier than me is going to win it. It is UV coloring. Cool. I don't have a UV light. Well, I, I do have a UV light, but it's my resin curing machine. Which I goofed. I have um, my little vat of resin, or correction, ISO that I use for cleaning uh, resin prints. I accidentally left it on the bench here. And the window right here, I have a giant piece of cardboard blocking it, it's painted black, but above it, there's like a little gap where some sunlight can get in every now and then. And like the sunlight hit it, and then it's like, now it's all, it was all filled with like just little bits of floating cured resin, semi-cured resin. So I had to like strain the whole thing and clean it all out. That was a pain in the butt. Okay, so um, I'm doing both right now, but we gotta put the heat sets in. And on these ones, make sure these two are sitting below the surface. So, 
coming from a producer and want something bigger. Um, tried it, tried it. Although LDO has a V2 kit soon, and uh, LDO makes good stuff. There, LDO is really the only full kit I will recommend. Um, this kit, it's coming pretty close. I won't say for sure until I'm done building it, but LDO kits are pretty much the only kits that you will see anyone on the team say, yeah, those are pretty good. But unfortunately, some of the AliExpress kits have been uh, spotty. So we won't recommend anything that, you know, hey, the, uh, the wiring is completely unsafe. Andrew Rogers, five dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. When you were testing the Revo, did you find it prone to clogging? Considering your... I had one jam on a Revo. Um, I ran a beta unit from May, May until I got a production unit. So May until like a, a month ago um, on V two twenty six here. Go back and watch streams when there was a cardboard box in it covering like hiding stuff inside the printer. That's when I got a Revo. Um, that printed all of the V0, all of like every ABS print for six months was on a Revo, no issues. Production unit in there right now is zero issues. Um, I have a Revo 6 in switch wire. I had one jam that I had to do a cold pull. Remember that has an enraged rabbit carrot feeder. So that's doing thousands of filament changes. And I had one jam that one cold pull fixed it. That's it. That's the only issues I've had with Revo was one jam that I had a cold pull and that was filament related. Um, I had no heat creep issues, no uh, zero issues with ooze, like, you know, leaking or whatever. It's been like 99.9% .9 reliable and the only issue is not related to it itself, I believe. So, now granted the beta units themselves had some issues that were related to them being beta units, um, but any issues that I would be concerned about were corrected on the production units. So yeah. Uh, what retraction? I, I didn't change retraction. I literally just took my mosquito out through the Revo in and started printing stuff and I haven't changed anything. Um, because it's direct feed, I think I'm running like 0.4 or 0.5 millimeters of retraction. So not much. I don't want to sand these because normally I'll, I'll take like a, a, a file and just clean off if uh, after I do heat sets, but they got the nice textured finish and I don't want to ruin them. <laughs> okay, so we got the heat set insert. So I need A, so I've got A and we're gonna put uh, the thingy A in. Oop, I gotta put some heat sets in too on one heat set on that side. Okay, so let me do that right now before I forget. Hello from Germany. What are you doing up so late? How effective is the bed housing? Are you talking about the, the Kirigami bed? I haven't used it. Um, it makes assembly a lot easier. And it it being like a you know folded steel monolithic bed, um, it should be more rigid. up with the chat here. Uh, 
Uh, but isn't the LDO kit also sold on that? No, LDO doesn't sell on AliExpress. They do not. So, make it really simple. A. A. Ah. Okay, so we have that, we have that. Heat set insert, we put that in. Get our little trusty top part here. One that matches up. There we go. I have the CAD. Why am I doing? Why am I looking at another printer? I have the CAD. Hey, look, CAD. I fail. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm right. I'm right. Just making sure. Okay, so. M335, M340, M335. 25. And three thirty-five and three forty and three thirty-five. There we go. Okay. And I'm gonna have to go hunting for the um, shims and bearings. So I don't think the shims are in this bag. So let me find the shims and bearings. So it's not in the bill plate bag. Nope, not on that one. This one they were in... Oh, there they are. Rain dew. Bearings. Where are the shims at? Oh, there are the shims. There we go. Now remember, it uses shims, not uh, washers. Okay. So if you go to the hardware store and buy just wa M3 washers, those are just stamped out. These are, well, these are stamped out too, but these are approx like an approximate size. So, yep, I found it, Lecter. Uh, I don't get these bots. Like, what is that even, like, supposed to mean? Just a random string, like, is it a website? Okay, so we flip this over. And how do we have it? So we have underneath we got bearing stack. So all boron bearing stacks are the same. Washer, bearing, bearing, washer. So when you got two of them, like we have here, you got washer, bearing, bearing, washer. Washer, bearing, bearing, washer. And on the other one here, you have a spacer, washer, bearing, bearing, washer. So let's build this guy. Try not to lose all these washers. Printed spacers out. Okay, so we have washer. Bearing, bearing, washer. Washer. Bearing. Bearing. Washer. Need for the 
other one we have printed spacer. Washer, bearing, bearing, washer. Look at that, I dumped out the right amount of washers. Okay. So it frees of assembly, assembly upside down. All six spacers are identical. We won't be calling them out going forward. And then we take this and we put it on top. M330s from the top, kind of hold it all together. So let's get those M330s out. Or, yeah, M330. Trying to beat, no, no. I'm going to be ending the stream uh, probably after we get these AB motor mounts. We are not doing a, a sprint. Considering I spent like the first like, what, half hour, 45 minutes of the stream just kind of unboxing the kit and going over everything. Um, not set up to go for some speed benchy numbers there. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! It finally died! And it's micro USB. Ugh. Ugh. By the way, I last charged this thing um, during the original V0 build. Uh, the, the LDO V0 build. That's when I charged it last. So, at least the battery lasts a while on those. Okay. Uh, charity stream. Yes, I will be doing a charity stream. Um, I'm just waiting for the actual foundation to be set up. I, I don't want to collect money um, and hang on to it. I, I, I don't want to hold on to money. I, I'd rather the money go directly into a charity. So, I'm waiting until that gets set up. And then I will do the charity stream. I, I don't want the money coming to me at all. Because I, I know some people have already done it, the, a charity stream, and I believe they just put it in a PayPal account, but I don't I don't want to touch the money. Because, um, one, I... You know, if you're giving me money, I'm going to get taxed on it. I, I'm not sure how that all works. I'd rather not risk it. And two, um, the internet being the internet... Of course, somebody will try and probably accuse me of skimming the money or something like that or trying to take a cut or whatever. So I'd rather just avoid that all the drama that's possible and just kind of do that. I'm going to need both motors. So, Lecter, are these beefier motors than the normal spec motors or am I just imagining things? So 8.5 millimeters, and that is like that. Bigger one. So yeah, so these are even beefier than your regular V0 motors. I'm starting to not look forward to giving this machine away. <laughs> like, dang it. This is a good machine. Bigger ones in ES126. Uh, ES if you're wondering, uh, there's a size there. Uh, 
How about there? And then we can adjust it if we need to. I'm not putting uh, Loctite on these yet because I'm probably going to have to adjust these. Okay. So, aka the root of all issues, scrub screws. Loose scrub screws account for the large percentage of the issues that users report. Save yourself hours of troubleshooting. Apply thread lock to all the grub screws during the build. See the product application notes for instruction. Do not tighten. Just put them on. So, when you put this together, you want the uh, wires facing inward, I believe, is the, uh, the proper way. Yeah, because if you, you can't have them, yeah. Well, you could have them facing towards there, but I believe most people have them facing inward. I don't think it actually calls it out in the instructions. Yeah, it doesn't call them out in the instructions. Okay, so what holds it together? M335s? M335s. Oh, the draw won't be for a while. Okay, well. There will be a charity stream in the future, and this will be the prize. So you're not tightening these screws, you're just going, you know, loose finger tight. Because you need to be able to uh, shift it. And then you can look in too and see if you need to adjust your, uh, your grub screws. Which I need to. Uh, Loctite attacking ABS. I don't use Loctite. I use uh, I use nail polish. Will have a Revo. I don't have any spare Revos. I only have the beta unit and two production units, and I'm using all of them. <laughs> well, the beta unit is uh, yeah, it's a beta unit. I wouldn't give that out. It's a little sentimental. Okay, so put that together, check your work, make sure everything lines up. Now is the time to adjust your uh, your pulley if you need to. Okay, so put that aside, build the other one. So B. Can you comment? Oh, uh, fun fact, they are out of spec. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, let's get some shims out and some bearings. What is spec? Everyone, what is spec? Spec doesn't mean anything, right? It's just suggestions. It's all just suggestions. Okay, so we got ourselves. Now this is building up the opposite. So previously this one, the corner had double bearing stacks and the one next to it had a bearing stack and then a spacer. On this one, or correction, a spacer then a bearing stack. 
On this one, it's the opposite. So on this one, we have on the corner, a bearing stack and a spacer. And on here, we have the double bearing stack. together and then put the M330s in the front to hold it all together. Dangerous. This ain't dangerous. This is a perfectly reasonable method, I believe. I think. I don't know. If it works, it works, right? Uh, the bearing stacks you did for the Trident Villa, is there a theme mod for the needed idlers or whatever? Um, I built the, tri the Trident to spec. I didn't do any uh, mods to that. Now, are you referring to the fact that I use uh, smooth idlers on my V2s and the V1 instead of the, uh, the tooth idlers? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, there is no mod. You just swap them out. It's just a hardware swap. You don't need to worry about uh, printing any different parts. It's just a straight hardware swap. Big electric screwdriver? Yes, 126. I need to start putting that in the description of my videos. M335s. Yeah, you, you just throw them in. You don't need to, uh... You don't need to print anything different. Um... Personally, I prefer the smooth idlers. They got bigger bearings in them. They last longer than the uh, the tooth idlers. Because the tooth idlers only have like little pin bearings in them, right? And you might luck out and they might last forever. Or you, they might just explode on you. Um, as somebody who built a V1.55, um, they explode. And a V2.0. Now, granted, those were the 3mm variant, not the 5mm. But they still go boom. Eventually. How do you recommend applying more grease to an assembled V0? Um, very carefully. I'm hoping that I can actually show something on... Uh, I'm going to try a few things. I'm going to try and do a video on it, because that is an actual common question I get a lot. Um, so I am going to try and do a video on it. And hopefully... 
show a way of doing it that is actually practical. Because here's the thing, you, you can't put grease on the rails and just move the carriage over and hope for the best. The problem is with that method is uh, there's wipers that block most of the grease from getting onto the actual, because you need the grease on the ball bearings. That's where the grease needs to be. The grease needs to be on the ball bearings. So, oh, that's way too long. Um, so, if you just put it on the rails and then just move your carriage over, you'll get some. And with lighter grease or oil, you'll get more. But it's not ideal. Like, you want to pack the bearings with grease, right? Now, I have seen, somebody told me that what you can do is if you have your rail, okay, and it's mounted, what you do is you take out one of the screws and you move your, your carriage over so it's like almost all over the screw. And then you go into the little gap there and you do the same thing with like a syringe filled with grease and you force it in. So because you got a little T-nut under there, it'll prevent the, uh, the grease from just filling up the extrusion. And hopefully some of it will get pushed back up into the carriage and kind of fill everything up. But I haven't tried that yet. Put a hole in the extrusion. Well, you can just do that yourself with the drill if you want. Like you, you could do that, you know, if you really need to grease it up, you can just kind of find where a hole is. Okay, so you got a hole there. And just drill a hole through the extrusion so that you can get a syringe up into the carriage. So you could do that. I mean, you don't need that as part of the CAD. You can kind of eyeball that if you want to. Um, but, report, unwanted message or spam, reported, okay. So yeah, you have options, you have options. Okay, so where are we at now? And now I gotta mount all these guys. So we put that together, check it to work. And now we put it together with a whole bunch of screws. So, at this point, let me put away all these washers and hopefully not lose them all. I really don't want to lose them all. And then we'll mount our AB motor mounts and then uh, I think at that point we'll call the build part of the stream done and we'll just go to Q&A until we call it. But it's getting kind of late. So again, these screws right here, these were just to keep these nuts from flying all over the place just to make things a little bit easier. Now over here you need uh, two nuts. So out of the three, get rid of one. And that's because you have um, four across the front here and then these two. So you're, one of them screws into the top extrusion and then two nuts and then three nuts. So it's really handy if you have something non-magnetic to kind of place these into position. M335s. Right, I'm pretty sure it's M335s. 
Yeah, M335s. Do LDO rails have a service hole? Uh, no, they're too small. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. Hopefully everything kind of lines up. Hopefully everything goes together, so let's find out here. Might have lucked out. No, no, no. Of course, there's always there's always one that doesn't want to start. Nope. Nope. And yeah. Dang it! I got two that don't want to go in. It's always two. I can't see anything down the hole. So you kind of just throw that in, hope it lines up. Nope. Okay, so loosen everything up and try again with lining everything up. Well, these are good. These are okay. The whole cordless screwdriver thing with uh, Tom there was he was using like a uh, a screwdriver, like an actual big chonky screwdriver or electric drill, I think. So I think that's where most people got their uh, Phones are dying. Okay, let's try this part. Yep. 
Que pague. Kind of hard to do this when you can't see anything down the hole. By the way, there is a mod that, uh, there we go. So there is an actual mod, um, that basically hold, like spaces these all out properly. So you don't have to finagle with this. Um, I don't have that mod printed. I never remembered to print it. So. Go with a, a Trident or a V2.4. Uh, depends how much, honestly, everyone's asking. It's hard to say because they both are functionally pretty much the same. They both print the same in terms of quality. Um, how much Z do you want? Because a V2 scales better in the Z than a Trident. So it comes down to how much Z do you want? Do you want 250 to 300 millimeters of Z? Trident. If you want 300 or more, 250 or V2. Okay, so we got that one. Let's get this other one on now. Or the all LDO nut bar plate. That's only for the uh, rails. all missed. How did you all miss? So this is pretty much the last part of the annoying part of the build, by the way. Tool head's not bad. Electronics will be easy peasy because this is a kit. Dang it. Ah, I got one that's not in the right spot. There we go. Okay, try this 
again. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Got them all. Okay. There's that. There's that. Get the corner one in. There we go. We're good. We're good. Okay. There we go. All good. So, I think we're going to end the stream there. Um, what time is it? 7.48. So we'll give, the, we'll give it 12 minutes here of uh, open floor. If anyone has any questions or want me to go over anything during the stream that they may have missed. Um, yeah. There we go. So we got our motors in. It's beginning to look a lot like a printer. There we go. So yep. Yeah. So after this, uh, we'll carry on next Tuesday with uh, idlers and a bunch of other stuff. And it crashed. Good point. That's a good way of it telling us it's time to end stream. I got to do a Windows update on here anyways. Okay. So what do you guys want to... Do you want me to go over anything? Did you miss anything? You got any questions? Do an open mic for the next 12 minutes. Uh, quality so far? Quality's good. Um, I had some issues with the extrusions, obviously, um, but that was kind of to be expected since this is an older extrusion kit. Um, those that buy the kit will get new extrusions. You shouldn't have to chase any of the tap holes. So, I won't chalk that up to the kit. I won't hold that against the kit because it is, it's a pre-production kit with, I'm assuming he sent me stuff he had. So, I won't chalk that up there. Some of the printed parts. I, I showed some of them off at the beginning of the stream. Um, but usually a good a good indicator of like, you know, is tool head parts are usually kind of a, a good quick demo of, hey, everything kind of fits together. Everything works properly. This is all their in-house glass filled ABS. Um, so it should be a little bit more rigid than normal ABS, but So we got, you know, some parts, three parts. Let's put a screw in there. Hey, everything lines up nice and good. I know I have another M3 somewhere. Did I not lose all my M3s? I have a bunch of them. I don't want to use any from the kit in case I lose it. Oh, headphones died. Yep, time to end stream. <laughs> But yeah, so everything, you know, screws go through, everything locks together well, everything meets up really well. Print quality is good. There's no like strings or, you know, warp parts or anything. Textured finish from textured print bed, etc. So yeah. Uh, what is different on the 2.4 R2? Um, if you want, uh, Steve builds. He's another guy on the dev team. He built one on his stream. Um, he got a pre-production kit. I'll be building mine out of a production kit. Um, but it's basically quality of life improvements to make things a little bit simpler for the build and bringing over some stuff that we've learned like from the 2.4 gantry onto, um, or correction, from the Trident gantry onto the 2.4. So it's basically just, you know, a, a, it's why it's 2.4 R2. It's not too, like there's already been an R run. Like there's already been one revision to the 2.4. It's Updates that don't require a full numbered revision. Uh, Derek, $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. What's the nut trap for? Uh, these guys right here. Okay. So for the rails, um, you used to have to do a printed part and then fill it with all these itty bitty M2 nuts that were, there we go, that were really annoying. 
So LDO went and just made a part that's just a, uh, a, a solid metal part with the holes that drilled and tapped at the right spots. Now there are also printed parts for, you know how I had to fiddle to get all these nuts lined up here for the AB uh, motor mounts. They have uh, printed parts that basically do the same thing for that too. It's a mod. I don't know where exactly it's at. You might be able to find it on the Voron GitHub in the mods. How long is the work break going to be? I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, so right now, um, technically a full-time YouTuber. We'll see how that goes. I'm kind of just trying it out for a bit. We'll see. Yeah, I know I hinted at that in the stream, but yes, I am technically doing the YouTubes full-time. So at this point, uh, hopefully video week, hopefully sometimes two. I'll try and do like a, a one long, one short, but I, stuff comes up all the time. And then uh, two streams a week, minimum, maybe three. Thursday, uh, member stream, hopefully around four o'clock for YouTube members and Patreon supporters. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We'll put the panels on the Trident or something and just kind of QA as the last one. Try to do one a month uh, where I do a members only or a supporters only stream. Uh, just kind of reward those that help the channel out because I would not be able to do this if it was not for you guys. Your direct support makes pretty much all of this possible. Nate Williams, $10. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know the music died. The music's tied to my headphones and the headphones died. So I think we're going to end it there. I am starving. I need to go figure out lunch. I will see you guys uh, Saturday night where we'll wrap up the Trident. We'll do Input Shaper and all that fun stuff. So yeah, or a Micron. Micron is on its way, hopefully. It's supposed to ship this week. So I'll, I'll bug DFH to see where it's at. Okay, enjoy the rest of your week. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Peace.